Oh. <laughs> hey, Terry, you can turn and face. Okay, so we need. Um, well, no, you actually slide in backwards there. We'll do it that way. Oh, well, your back's up to you. All right, so we're going to do a compression pump treatment, and we're going to use the sequential sleeve. So give me an indication. Why would we be doing this treatment for Terry? Lymphedema. So we'll say she's got some lymphedema in the upper extremity. So I'm going to start out by explaining that Terry, we're going to do a compression pump treatment today. Okay, so I'm going to put this sleeve on you, and I'm going to hook it with this to this machine. And what it's going to do is it's going to fill with air and it's going to squeeze and then it's going to relax and it's going to continue to go through that cycle so you feel it get a little tighter and a little looser okay this is a really long treatment so i want to find out i want to let her know you're going to be here two hours you have to use the bathroom right now okay it's a good idea to ask because we don't want her getting up after an hour because what's going to happen when she stands up all that fluid's going to go back so make sure that they know it's a long treatment maybe suggest using the bathroom um, and give her an idea of what the treatment so what to expect when we do this this sleeve is going to cover your whole arm it's going to get tight but it shouldn't be so tight that you feel any numbness or tingling so remember we said one of the things you need to do is make sure that they don't experience numbness or tingling if they do the sleeve is too tight and we need to reduce it before we start i just need to check a couple things so now i'm going to go through my list of contraindications i just want to check my hands are really cold make sure you've got good circulation okay it looks good I'm looking for any kind of active infection and we're treating the whole arm so you want to make sure you check the whole arm you haven't had any vein thrombosis here recently okay no pulmonary embolus no congestive heart failure <laughs> what am i missing <laughs> fractures no fractures in the area okay so we checked that's fine we do still need to do a sensation test because she's going to tell me if it's feeling uncomfortable we got to check the whole area. Now I don't need to do 25 tests on the forearm where I'm just going to get an idea. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do my sharp or dull explanation. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to test your sensation so you can tell me if it's too tight. So I'm going to use the safety pin and ask you if you feel dull or if you feel sharp. And I try it on your right hand so I understand. So look away. Tell me if you feel sharp or dull. No. Sharp or dull. No. Okay. She gets the test. Let's do the treatment. Now. So look away and tell me if you feel sharp or dull. No. Sharp or dull. No. Sharp or dull. Sharp it all? 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 Sharp it all, sharp, sharp it all, sharp, sharp it all, dull. Okay, spend a little more time on the fingers because there was that one wasn't quite sure. So that's all right. We just need to go back to the area and reassess. So she seems to have good uh, sensation. I checked circulation. I didn't see any signs that look like there might be an active infection, a blood clot, anything like that. So we've checked for contraindications. I think we're good. A um, couple things I need to do. This may affect your blood pressure slightly, so we're going to check your blood pressure. In the checkoff, you will check blood pressure and conveniently enough we do have a double-ended stethoscope so I can listen to the blood pressure with you be fun. do I want to check it in her affected arm definitely not so you typically you want to take a blood pressure in the left arm however um, we can't do that because that's her lymphedema arm so we're going to go ahead and we're going to check it in the right so if you have not practiced blood pressure in a while this is a good time to kind of bone up on your blood pressure skills I do expect that as you practice, you are practicing with your partner actually taking a blood pressure. What's your usual? About 110 or 16 or something. check blood pressure before because remember we want to do that before during and after the next thing I need to do is we need to check 
and record girth measurements. So do you recall in the girth measurement lab, we made a chart? So this is a good time to have the chart ready made. When you come to the checkoff, if you like, you can have a chart all ready to go, okay? So it can say pre-treatment measurements, upper extremity. You don't know if you're gonna do an upper or a lower extremity. You'll draw a card that will tell you. Um, but you can kind of be prepared with the chart ready to go. That's also a good reminder to make sure that you actually do your girth measurements because that's one thing that some people forget in the checkout. All right, so Terry, I gotta measure your arm to make sure that um, you can see progress. Is it okay if I make little marks on your pen? So how am I gonna start? Where do I wanna start my girth measurements? Where, what were some of the rules for measurements? Yeah. Gotta be a, a prominent bony landmark that's non-movable and as close to the end of the bone as possible, okay? So let's use, let's use our stylite process and that's gonna be my zero. And I'm gonna do about every inch. So would you do me a favor, just kind of put a finger there. So I'm gonna make a line at one inch, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna continue that all the way up the arm, okay? And then I'm gonna take my first girth measurement to the 16th of an inch. All right, so I've got six and a quarter, so I write down six and one quarter, okay? And then I move up my second mark, there it is, and I measure seven on the dot, write down seven, and continue all the way up the arm. On the checkoff, I'll ask you to do at least three or four measurements to demonstrate that you know how to do that, okay? I probably won't ask you to take the time to measure the entire upper or the entire lower extremity. So we've got our girth measurements. We checked blood pressure, we warned her about the time frame, um, sensation test. I think we've done all the preparation we need to do. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get a sleeve ready. I have extra sleeves in the tub down here. There's a pair of scissors. You can cut it or there's lots of ones that are custom cut in there. This should be snug, but you don't want, um, if it's too loose, it's gonna wrinkle and you're gonna see that that could cause problems. So you want it to be pretty snug. So I'm going to slide this in your arm, and this is just to kind of help kind of keep your skin a little cool. Is that okay? All right. She took off rings and watch. Make sure that you remove jewelry. Don't please don't put somebody with jewelry in my sleeve. You'll puncture it. I'll be mad. So no <laughs> no rings, no watches. If they can't remove jewelry, they can't do the treatment. You don't want to compress someone's hand with a ring on, that would be really uncomfortable. So we make sure that we've got the sleeve in place. And then I can, um, I like to hook the pump up first. So I'm gonna hook this up. One end goes to the sleeve, the other end goes to the machine. We have two different machines. One is a sequential, one is an intermittent. They look a little different because of the plugs. This one only has a single plug, this one has multiple. So that's how you know this is the sequential. I think it actually says sequential right on the front too, so that should help. <laughs> so you're gonna plug that in. This is set up for a bilateral treatment. If you're not doing bilateral treatment, make sure that the top holes are plugged off. Okay, so there's a little thing here to keep it closed. <coughs> All right, before I put this on her, let's get her in a good position. So we want to make sure we've got some elevation going on here. Is that comfortable? You're going to be here for a while and you want a sheet over you. Okay, so we want to drape if necessary. These do zip open. Remember, you're treating extremities with lymphedema. They're going to be very swollen. They may not just slide on. Now for us, us in class, we don't have swollen extremities, so you can probably just slide the thing on. But when somebody's got a very swollen arm, you'll probably need to zip it on. Make sure you put the sleeve on the right way. Don't put it upside down. Excuse me, Terry, I'm so sorry. If you put it upside down, then it's gonna work in the exact opposite direction. So the zipper's gonna start at the bottom and work its way up. And I'm just gonna kinda 
set it in place. I want it as high as it can go in her axilla, and I think we've reached that. Does that feel okay? You see your fingers? Okay. So I'm going to set the machine, and then I'm going to turn it on. You'll hear it humming. It's kind of loud. And it's going to squeeze and relax. When it relaxes, I want you to wiggle your fingers. Okay, that'll help kind of keep circulation going. So the next thing I can do then is set the machine. There's a pressure dial, there's a deflate, and an inflate. Deflate and inflate is off time and on time. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my pressure. For an upper extremity, what did we say? 30 to 60, 30 to 60 millimeters mercury. So I'm going to set it right at about 30. And then for my on and off time, this one's it's backwards. It's off on time. So make sure you pay attention to what the settings are. So I want to set my on time. We said for this one, we want to go like 90 or this one goes to about 100 to 30. That's about as close to that 90, 30 that I can get on this machine. Remember we said 90 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So I set it as close as I can on this. Set the machine on a stable surface and turn it on. Now if we had 25 minutes, we'll wait here for this thing to blow up, but it's going to take a really long time. So we're not going to wait the whole time for this to blow up. So we wait, we wait, and it's all blown up. Fantastic. <laughs> and I asked Terry, how does that feel? Is it comfortable? Does it feel snug? Loose. Loose, okay. So if it feels like it's a little on the loose end, we're going to go ahead and up the pressure. When you adjust the pressure, make sure you stay with them for at least one cycle so they, they can tell you if it's feeling comfortable. And then of course, I'm going to leave her with a bell. I don't want to leave her where she can't get a hold of me. Put it in the uninvolved extremity if you're doing upper extremities. Don't give it to her in her wrapped up arm. She can't use it. <laughs> okay, Terry, let me know if you need anything. Okay, I'm gonna set my timer. I'm still gonna do a five minute check. And because this is a two hour treatment, I'll probably do maybe an every 30 minute check. It kind of depends on if this is her first time doing this treatment or if she's come back several times. But there is one thing I definitely need to do. At the one hour mark, I need to come back and reassess her blood pressure. That's what I'm going to look and see if there's been a drastic change in systolic. There should not really be a big change in diastolic. That one really should not change. Um, if there's a change in diastolic, then we probably need to stop treatment altogether. Um, but if there's a drastic change in systolic, I might change the pressure setting and then reassess to see if that's brought blood pressure back down. Make sure she's feeling okay. She may need to lay down at this point so we can readjust. She can lay down. But what I don't really want her to do is get up and hang her arm down. Okay? Questions so far? All right. Um, so we're going to set our timer probably for another half hour. So we'll come back at the hour and a half mark. Just check, see that she's doing okay. And then finally at the two hour mark, treatment's done. So this is the first actually off cycle. So look at your fingers. What's the off cycle? That's the off. Even yeah. Well, because it's set for the 100 seconds on, 30 oh. seconds off. So. Yeah, this one takes a really, really long time to fill. The intermittent fills much quicker. So. If you practice, you might want to use the intermittent. Um, on the checkoff, I'm not going to ask you to wait till the whole thing fills up. But I do suggest that you get this going and you leave it on for 10 minutes or so just to feel the sensation of compression. It should be comfortable. It should never be painful. Okay? So if we reach the end of our treatment, she's been compressing for two hours now. We can stop. So you can take that bell. So at the conclusion of treatment, <laughs> I can take the sleeve off, and then remember this one is now Terry's, we'll use this again, so I can write her name on it. And what I want to do now is take a look at her arm and see if there's any unusual response to the treatment. If this is loose and it's wrinkled, think about somebody with lymphedema with a lot of swelling, a real puffy arm. If there's a wrinkle and you do this compression for two hours, that wrinkle can turn very quickly into a pressure sore. So make sure you look for wrinkles before you start, and when you're done, check the area. Often you'll see little line marks from the, the, the sleeve. That's fine, as long as it's not red, it doesn't look blistered, it doesn't look like a pressure sore. Okay, so. Look at the whole area, inspect for any unusual signs. What do I need to do next? A couple things. I need to reassess her blood pressure, make sure that 
when she leaves, it's at a normal level, okay? And then one other thing I've got to do before she gets up. Two other things. I've got to recheck my measurements. So I'm going to get my tape measure back out. I relate it. She's still got the marks on her, so I can recheck measurements, write them right on my girth chart, and hopefully I'll see a decrease. I should see a change in girth from the beginning to after treatment. And then finally, before she goes, I need to make sure that she doesn't swell right back up. So I'm going to get an ACE wrap. And as part of the checkoff, I'm going to ask you to also demonstrate or, or um, explain to your patient how to ACE wrap at home, okay? So you'll be talking to your patient about using either a spiral or a figure eight pattern, that there should be more pressure towards the hand, less pressure as they go to the arm or up the arm. Is there any way that they can cause damage with an ACE wrap? if it's too tight. So I need to make sure that she knows the warning signs of an ACE wrap that's too tight. So I need to tell you, you know, if your fingers are feeling tingly, if they're turning a funny color, this is too tight, you need to take it off and rewrap. I would continue this wrap all the way up to a straight line across from her axilla. I don't want to stop it here, otherwise this is just going to swell up. Okay? So wrap all the way up. That's right. <laughs> Look like um, and then let her know because she's wearing this for edema that you need to wear this when you're out of bed. So anytime you're upright, first thing you get up in the morning, you should wrap your arm. When you go to bed, you can take it off. If we're, if we're doing this treatment for uh, burn tissue or scar modification, she needs to wear this, if you recall, 23 hours a day. Basically, she gets an hour to kind of take it off and shower. And then the rest of the time, that wrap should be on there because you're trying to modify scar tissue. You're trying to prevent it from building up excessively. Okay, so make sure she understands how to do an ACE wrap. If her family member is present, maybe I would ask them to demonstrate so they can show me that they know how to do it properly, that they can see um, what's too tight, what's too loose, and I can show them that. And I think that's a compression treatment.